Welcome on and all. Uh, today we have uh, Dr. Roshini, uh, who did her uh, MBBS from uh, Kilpok Medical College. And uh, she has secured rank 57 in uh, uh, November INSA uh, 2023. Uh, welcome, Dr. Roshini. Thank you, sir. And uh, happy to interview uh, fellow KMCN. And, uh, I am very proud to be interviewed by you, sir. <laughs> thank you. So it's, it's a very prestigious exam and you getting a rank 57 uh, within uh, five months of preparation after finishing your internship i would like to ask you a few questions like which can serve as a motivation for uh, your juniors to crack this prestigious exam so finishing your internship uh, you joined ada plexus uh, regular batch in the month of june and uh, like there will be classes which will be happening in the weekdays and uh, weekends so how do you schedule a day uh, when there is a class and how do you schedule a day when there is a gap between two classes? Okay, sir. Uh, first of all, my internship uh, got over only during, uh, only on uh, the 31st of May. Uh, I actually joined the June batch and uh, classes started pretty early on the 9th of June itself. But I wasn't in the uh, zone to concentrate. So the month of June was basically a mental vacation. I, I did come to class. I did it in classes. I just made notes. But then I, uh, my mind wasn't there. Uh, only from the 1st of July, I think. 1st of July was uh, Dr. Rohan's surgery class. From then, I decided, okay, this is it. I'll, I'll have to uh, start being serious about this or else my preparation will go nowhere. So uh, my first idea uh, at coming classes was that I needed to have first good resource. I should make notes properly first because there is no point in me attending classes uh, or paying uh, so much attention uh, unless and until I had something to revise from at a later point of time. So uh, on the days that we had classes, I think uh, area schedule was actually pretty good, sir. We already always had uh, a few days gap of each and every subject, which was sufficient enough for us to uh, give a thorough first read and complete uh, the Q-Bank uh, from whichever... Uh, Q-Bank modules that the students are using. I actually had uh, a different app for uh, the Q-Banks. I used to solve ADA Q-Banks also. Uh, we also had the excellent concept of uh, subject-wise tests at the initial entry subject. And uh, that usually helped me assess as to where I was. Initially, I used to think that, oh, attending classes was a pain. Uh, we have to sit there for 12 hours. That is already draining by itself. And then I, I did not wish to come back home and study. But then I talked to uh, one of my uh, college seniors who was a former student of OPR. And then he told me that nothing is impossible. You come back home, you relax. But you still uh, somehow find some amount of time to at least flip through the pages. You, you cannot give a comprehensive read, but at least you can flip through the pages, at least look at what has been taught the critical day. So that is what I uh, used to do. As after uh, each and every day, uh, I used to get back home pretty late, only around 8, 8 30. I used to have lunch, I mean, sorry, dinner. And then uh, I used to uh, sit, uh, I used to relax actually. And then uh, if I did feel sleepy that night, I would go off to sleep. I'd wake up early in the morning at around 4 40. And then I would look through the topics that were taught that day and then leaderboards were another excellent uh, way of assessing my season. Some days I used to feel overconfident thinking, oh, this is a topic that I've done before. I've already studied this and I will score excellently well, but then there'll be people in the class who would like score uh, uh, all of the questions right, very casually, some eight, 10 people before me. And I used to think, how was I supposed to compete with these people if I'm this complacent? So that instilled a sense of discipline in me, I think. And then after uh, a particular subject got over, uh, I just had those many particular days to complete that particular subject. I realized early on that if I was going to have like a lag of those many subjects, that lag will stay with me up until the day of the exam. So I decided those were the days that I had for completing that particular subject. I will finish that subject within those three days. So I somehow managed to pull through the first read. And then uh, I used to finish the few back modules for that particular subject also. And then I always, always made, made it a point that I should always give the subject wise test before attending the next subject. That should not be carried carried upon later because that will always stay there at the back of my mind. And as to time spacing, sir, I'm not a very rigid person. Like I will wake up at 8 o'clock. I will take a breakfast break of one hour. Whenever I used to feel like taking a break, I used to take a break. But then I feel that the time that is spent studying should be spent studying with utmost concentration. We can afford to take breaks uh, every once in a while. I used to even sleep in the afternoons if I felt like it. Because on some days, I used to be really mentally stimulated in the afternoon to keep going. I'm very interested in gung-ho about the subject. But on other days, obviously, the mind will not be very much attuned. So on those days, I used to sleep off in the afternoons. And then I used to wake up and finish. But the only target was in the gap that was assigned to me before the next subject, I should be completing the subject somehow. And that the note should be perfect. Because during only because only then when I revise, I will have like a good set of notes to start. Like some amount of work has already been done. Great. So while uh, you are speaking, uh, there are two keywords you have mentioned. Uh, that yes. is about the discipline, and the second important thing about not procrastinating uh, ah, yes. things which uh, needs to be finished on time. So that 
sums up how you became a topper the first important thing it's like putting your self disciplined schedule how uh, it works that works as a charm for everyone and second important thing you should have your self targets that's mm-hmm. one of the things is like not to procrastinate things mm-hmm. and uh, which will sum up swell up and which will create fear on uh, students okay. so great uh, thank you great uh, you have implemented few things as regards ad plexus is concerned uh, we uh, were the ones who brought a change in the module which is in the form of a workbook otherwise uh, you will be writing your notes mm-hmm. in a blank sheets of paper we brought in something called workbooks and uh, which structure the way uh, a faculty uh, delivers the lecture at the same time it gives a structured notes where people can fill up the notes and uh, one important thing uh, as you already mentioned about the leaderboards so how helpful was uh, leaderboard uh, in your preparation how useful it was on a because uh, as regards area plex is concerned uh, after every class it's not after every subject after every class you'll have 10 to 12 questions or uh, 20 to 30 questions to assess yourself among your peer competition so mostly you take your leaderboards uh, uh, while you are uh, commuting or why you will be taking inside the classroom or you will be taking it in your home it starts at 6 am that's for sure um, so as to the workbooks the workbooks were one of the main clinching factors as to why i chose idea plexus because i know that i am not a person who makes good notes that i will not read my own notes later if i made them from scratch i i will not patiently make notes it will not look attractive i will not feel like reading it later so i needed structure to a subject so adr in that uh, respect has been the biggest boon ever i did not have to sit and like compartmentalize topics for each and every subject the topics which were there in the workbook are already hired i did not have to waste time and then like figure out which topics were hired and even the teachers while teaching they used to repeatedly insist like if in this, if need is your target do this just do this instead of but if you are any to initiate you, you need to do this also so in that way even while making the notes we used to demark it like this is highly really, this is something which we need to know instead as for the leader board sir they used to be con- they typically used to be conducted at like 6:30 or sometimes even at 6 a.m in the morning so even though it was like mildly stressful at that point of time i oh, we have to be up at like so early and then we have to go to class also but that did set an incentive like i should at least spend 15 or 20 minutes with the subject before i take the leader board because if i do not do that i will take the leader board and end up feeling like a loser which i do not want to which will indirectly impact my confidence as to my understanding of the subject which i did not want to do. so at least some amount of revision i used to do so i obviously this this cannot happen like uh, all 30 days in a month because nobody is a robot so when on the days that i used to feel like it i used to do this i used to like go through the first sheet and the later boards actually regularized us in the sense that they they did make or not only just me all the people who sat with me or who were in the class who at least go through the notes once or twice so that some amount of data is reading so in your uh, uh, kind of entry you have said like you will be getting up at uh, 4:30 a.m in the morning is it always 4:30 a.m in no, the sir, morning no, definitely not only on the days that i felt like getting up at 4:30 i used to get up at 4:30 if i felt like i wanted to sleep then i was exhausted i cannot do any more my body needs a break i would wake up at 7 just before the class and go to class at 8 okay. this is not a very stringent uh, schedule actually i i am more of a just go with the flow type of person so people who like to adhere to a schedule i think this better than getting up because right. i knew that i would personally uh, work hard and overcompensate if i did not like if i slacked off the previous day but for people who cannot do that i would not advise them it's better to stick to schedules so when uh, there is no class actually uh, for example uh, let's like let's say uh, you have a gap of around 5 days yes sir so uh, how do you schedule a day on uh, those free days so uh, i used to basically look at the gaps first sir, because there was the concept of gds also i cannot right. like take gts on uh, breaks after subjects which are very very less for like say two days or one day because that will be spent in recollecting the subject term. so on these these i would like call lump sum days so these days i used to get excited because the last day will always be a gt i will not do anything on that day i'll just give a gt i'll just relax for a while because like giving the gt it's a like it takes a lot of energy saps a lot of energy out of you like when you're very early in your preparation because a lot of guesswork needs to be done because we've not yet completed all of the subjects so Complete. most of the answers that you're throwing off you're throwing off based on guesswork so i used to keep that for gd and then uh, in the i think two days are enough sir two to three days are enough if it's like a huge subject like oj it will maybe take like four days to give a first otherwise two to three days are enough to complete the first read and on the one extra day that i have i used to revise some other subject which i'd done in the previous week or else i would not be able to recollect the previous subject day. and so, as to timing sir i used to i personally believe that getting an early start will benefit 
us in many ways. I I just do not mean that we need to be up at like four or five or six in the morning. Just like okay. if we get up at like so even even at eight, for example, I feel we should just go sit in the spot in where we want to study at least by nine. Not not more than an hour needs to be spent in the relaxing yourself or doing other things because I feel if we keep delaying. the connection between us and the books we'll never get to we we'll just take another break we we'll be like okay till breakfast let me pop a break or till lunch let me pop a break and that is a never ending saga so even okay. if i did not like if i wasn't in the mood to study i'll just go and sit in my study room just be with my books at least okay. somehow convince myself that i needed to study so that at least some amount of studying gets to get done sure like uh, as we started in june july uh, august uh, yes, probably uh, uh, some amount of uh, channelizing of your energies would have started from september or october yes, sir, you would have gone really serious mode uh, in october so let's say like from october 1 onwards uh, did you have any fixed target of completing mcqs like say like i need to on a daily basis i need to complete 100 mcqs per day or did you have any specific targets of completing mcqs uh i was an atypical person in this respect i feel sir i initially used to listen to the interviews of the talkers and think oh, i need to complete 150 mcqs per day or 50 mcqs per day only then i will become an, a better exam taker but then i realized the more and more i tried to try to constrain myself within these limits the more haphazard i was becoming so i just decided i would go by feel like if i felt this much needed to be done today i would do that or else i wouldn't pressurize myself i actually had uh, one of my classmates who has been sort of my student mentor Since I started preparing, sir, because he got through to an uh, national institute during his internship at MIT, sir. So he acted as my litmus test. Every time I used to take a GT or I used to solve few bags, I used to go up to him and ask, like, "Is this enough? Am I doing okay? Is this progress? Will I ever get to the point that you are right now?" And he used to help me. And I was actually sort of having like a uh, a very anxious time by the start of October, sir. Which means that I didn't want to give much. I my target was <laughs> always neat. I didn't know what to give in a sip, and I was like supremely stressed about it. Thinking, oh, I have not like done many, read many subjects. Even first year, I have not completed. Till date, I have not read dermatology. <laughs> Whatever dermatology question I answered in a sip, also I just like barely. I had an idea that this was it, and I answered. That's it. So I was like, I have not like done so many things. This exam is stressing me out. Should I not take? And another one of my friends, he actually opened my eyes, saying, "You just go and give it. Like, if you get a good rank, it is going to serve as a motivator for you. If not, it is going to fuel the fire in your belly, saying that you need to study more." For you. Either way, it's a win-win situation. So just give it. And um, at the start of October, I realized I did not have a strategy for this, and that was the stupid thing that I was doing. So I sat down. So I sat down, and I realized that I had done a uh, bad minimum compared to the people who'd been planning for this since so long. So I needed to catch up somehow. So I feel with this, uh, the first thing that I did was I mentally made sure that I solved all of the previous year questions multiple times. Like even if I solved them in the Q bank, I would go and look at them again and again. Like uh, last five days before the exam, uh, the questions which are already solved, I was simply looking at them. Also. And similarly, same questions were repeated in the exam. So like several questions were the exact same. At some point of time, I didn't even remember the concept as to the logic behind the question. I just knew this was the question. This was the answer because it was very tricky question, but the answer I remember. So I feel that in this, it's a very repetitive exam. So previous year questions and topics definitely helps. And I just I actually was attending uh, regular classes even through the month of October so, because we had classes uh, at Adia. So I just decided, okay, I will go attend class. I will come back home. The one hour time that I managed, I mean, I'm able to salvage in the night after I come back home. I will spend with that subject. I did that for the day. And in the morning, which I get about like four to five thirty, that one and a half hours that I get in the morning, I will spend with the subject that I want to revise. So that is how I somehow managed to put in the month of October. Like. Uh... the most important thing is like it's about all about managing your time efficiently yes. it's about effectiveness is there and efficient uh, something different but how you effectively manage your time that's how uh, people become toppers it's not that uh, you need uh, to finish 19 subjects to become a topper yes, that's the first Definitely. important fundamental in post graduate medical entrance is that or most of the subjects are uh, connected and it's yes. integrated so if you have a good knowledge in pathology obviously uh, dumb touch questions would be easy. Yeah. so that's how the interconnectivity between the subjects and that's the integration is what is being tested in yes. this higher uh, institute exams and glad that uh, i have seen a lot of toppers uh, who would have finished only 10 to 12 subjects still they would have been able to get a very decent rank 
and like you how you managed to get it i think uh, fair enough uh, you don't have finished around three to four subjects if i'm right yes sir and again a uh, revision part was also not that sufficient because still the program was going on for yes, uh, the regular batch of idea plexus almost all the toppers who have been interviewed right now they belong to the current ongoing batch and they even finished the whole portions so it's glad that you were able to do it and it's more of perfect planning strategies which has been implemented which worked for you a uh, strategy which you worked to sum up is like uh, to work on the mcqs to squeeze out that one hour see that one hour is the most important difference what it made in your life yes, addition sir. because what people uh, sitting for a 12 to 13 hour of class getting back to the home it's almost exhausted and still you are able to squeeze that one hour and that is the difference why you are right now in uh, Uh, your INS set at rank fifty seven with your dream seat already your seat is already achieved so glad and uh, next important thing I just wanted to ask you is like uh, uh, regarding the workbooks of Idea Plexus okay. uh, uh, like I think uh, yeah almost sixteen to seventeen subjects uh, would have been uh, completed with the yes. workbooks so how useful was the workbooks for your revision part uh, for the INS set yes. uh so during my first read uh, i i i was uh, careful enough not to use the highlighter i did not touch the highlighter i read everything from top to bottom i did and then while revising for the first time i realized i remembered nothing so what i did uh, i used the highlighter and in the page i would only like mark those words which i thought uh, would be needed uh, during the next time so that when uh, i didn't uh, have to read the entire page the next time i actually revised just looking at the words i i should know what was on the page so only those words i highlighted So, if I had to uh, have done a second revision for maybe like me this time, this time I would have just looked at those words. I would not have like read through the entire books. So that is how I uh, actually regularized my workbooks. Had time permitted, I would have probably made a twentieth notebook. I didn't have time. I could only consolidate certain formulae uh, in a small book that I had. Uh, probably, if I uh, continue to try to read, um, I think I will do it now. Uh, other than that, the workbooks were uh, the biggest boon, according to me, sir. Because I do, I make dismal notes. I will not look at my notes. I, I, I do. It is just abysmal the quality <laughs> of what I write. I was actually uh, rooting. I used to come to the classes predominantly for the workbooks because I know they were they were of excellent quality. As to uh, subjects like anatomy and surgery, diagrams used to be printed then and there, like the anatomical anatomical sections, which would be asked in the exams, so that I didn't like have to go still Google that or something. I just needed to just mark. What what the uh, parts were directly in the work, so that while I revised, it was a very consolidated resource. And also while doing few banks, I uh, was mindful enough to basically add explanations with then and there in that particular page. One common mistake that I've seen people do is uh, the questions which they get wrong. They will basically add it, uh, annotate it at the end of the book. You're basically not going to look at that because I know I'm not going to look at. It. So then and there in that particular topic, I used to write in red. Oh, okay, this is something we are making repeatedly making mistakes on. And I also had this list uh, for in the set. Like these were the topics that he was continuously making mistakes on. No matter how many times I revise, even if you ask me now, I'll be uh, I'll be wrong at it. <laughs> no, such such a list of topics I had. Uh, like even like while giving GTs, I realized that no matter the amount of times that I revise them, my mind is just refusing to retain it. So one just one day before the exam, I was looking at those topics, and they actually uh, quite helped us because some questions did come from those topics. So I feel uh, having. uh some sort of strategy before the exam actually helps whatever works it's a very personalized approach right so like whatever is defective in us we need to correct so it's like uh, the strategies which uh, you are implemented uh, it's like uh, on a flow you already discussed actually so it it is actually a personalized but 90% what needs to be done in the right mode is like it it's like revising your notes and second the mcqs yes. which you had a definite time to work on it so these are the set of right things what a topper used to do and and um, uh, time the mcqs were awesome sir the leader book that i must say before <laughs> that i used to sit sit with mcqs even in the uh, other uh, qbank app that i had i used to have to sit until the last 5 seconds and then wait uh, what would be the option and then i have to say i just choose in the leader boards because the time was restricted to just 30 seconds I was forced to think quickly on it, and I think that helped me very, very much with this year because the time was very short. The concept of this thirty uh, seconds, people uh, slightly uh, it gets uh, them demotivated because people will think that if I'm able to read it for forty uh, five seconds or more than a minute, uh, I would have got that keyword for assessing that uh, 
option right here uh, i'm unnecessarily getting penalized because mm. the time constraint is there but it's all about uh, bringing in that critical thinking in that time so uh, we still go with that uh, mode of giving it in yes. 30 seconds or 40 seconds but most importantly what you said i would like to reemphasize for the people who are going to look at this interview is that you made it a point that you are making mistakes in the same topics and uh, which is one of the topics which you have noted down annotated at the place where you have taken notes that's the most important thing what as a future uh, aspirant one was going to use this uh, interview like how you used other interviews which you have seen from your seniors this is one of the most valid points i would say is like if you have made a mistake in any question you should bring that question to the notes immediately yes sir and that's the way your subconscious mind will get activated so taking those questions to another page 100% there is no kind of 100% assurance that you will revisit those questions but what is the exact thing in an interview what we would like to uh, give to the future aspirant is that these are the minute points which people would have implemented right from the interview uh, ma'am would have said the uh, first important thing getting up at 4:30 occasionally but certain time she gets up at 7:00 uh, <laughs> it's according to her second important thing putting a strategy which is personalized that's one our time and the third important thing taking up mcq seriously annotating the wrong to the notes that's the biggest biggest point of success for anyone channelizing everything everyone has 100 resources today you have 100 resources but how those resources will work is when you put a clear cut plan to make it in favor of you like exactly what ma'am has said annotating those points to your notes <laughs> that's going to increase your recall power and uh, excellently you have brought down the points but i would like to ask your day strategy of your exam how many questions you attempted on ines set so uh, on the uh, actually with respect to ines set it was a very uh, non traditional method for me to attend the exam because one week before the exam i was severely sick with streptococcal pneumonitis i was on xeradol twice daily so i was sleeping for like about 2 hours in the afternoon daily i was severely annoyed thinking what is this mindset with what mindset am i going to write the exam but i just decided okay i have started revising i am going to give the exam come what may it is just a stepping stone towards me i will write this exam and uh, one day before the exam i happened to watch the reel of uh, dr rohan on instagram where he told that 180 questions was something that a competitive aspirant should attempt so i decided okay by hook or crook somehow i will manage to attempt 180 questions i will not advise this hack right strategy for all other people so this is what i decided to do. and uh, in this it i think this year actually through a curve ball by basically splitting the uh, questions into 45 uh, minute sections i had actually fared uh, better off in the traditional uh, method of the exam sir because uh, for me personally i usually had like about 20 minutes to spare with all of the 200 questions uh, in the egts that i used to take so in those times when i used to look back at the questions sometimes even for questions which i marked wrong when i used to look them uh, look at them for a second time i used to uh, inspiration used to struck me strike me, sorry so that i would remember okay this is the correct answer for this question in my uh, haste i marked something else but this time we didn't have the opportunity to do that we just had discrete 45 minute sections and i feel that actually ended up stressing myself a little bit more uh, i i did make like several 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 silly mistakes which i realized as soon as i stepped out of the exam hall but i didn't bother and on the day of the exam i knew that i had to, i mean i needed to attempt one eighty questions so i just mentally decided that not more than two questions from each section shall i leave blank somehow like if i if i know that it's 60% this answer i will mark that answer or even if it's not like for one particular question i had no idea about the question sir it was just uh, i just threw caution to the wind and i was like okay i shall answer this this uh, is this in it i actually attempted a little uh, more 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 in a cafe manner actually but i didn't have any goals as such that, that i needed this that i needed to do that me as i said was my main so i was able to attempt it in very relaxed manner so so what what is going to happen i will attempt this question so i attempted around 190 questions and i didn't come back from watch any recalls so because i decided one week i would relax because i have to sit and prepare for neat uh, i was so sure that i had uh, i mean that i was waiting for pony that i even paid for the cbt of adr as well i was just relaxing calmly at my house recalls also i didn't watch like recently after innocent results came out i happened to like see one or two recalls and i think around 25 25 to 30 mistakes i think i would have done i think maybe other aspirants also got similarly confused uh, like me because of the new 45 minutes setup sir but i think most of the questions sir uh, at first glance the answer was apparent like for some questions like some amount of your primal brain actually tells you that this is the answer 
for this you we, we need to look close closely but the work books were excellent of course i can assure that the people who read the notes from class who actually revised it like about a week before the exam all the answers were there, there in the book except for one or two um, weird questions which were unanswerable on purpose other questions if we revised and if we managed to devise a plan to remember the answers for those questions we'll be able to answer i did nothing else apart from whatever was given to me in class that was my only resource i did only that and that seemed to help me great so uh, you were uh, uh, letting know about the strategies you have taken on the exam one of the uh, best thing is like uh, you said like you went with a uh, stress free uh, thing that's one of the things what makes uh, on a topper actually uh, taking that stress uh, till the exam where uh, you are going to take that exam till that date it's going to be a kind of lot of people uh, succumb to that stress actually but uh, since uh, you had a one week of uh, uh, kind of uh, probably uh, uh, stress free thing you were uh, more stressed on your health than on your exams probably you, you got it right for your exams so uh, what uh, did you ever uh, think that you will crack this exam and i said uh, or did you ever uh, uh, doubt yourself for this rank what was your strategy like what rank you should have got in this i said what was your strategy for this exam so uh, initially when i was one of the uh, gang who used to believe that inisit is something that is not for me i am i am that I, i am not up to the caliber of inisit was what uh, my belief was up until uh, the first time i tried an inisit gt and to my contrary belief i had actually scored higher in the inisit gt than i did in the neat gt and then i had to reevaluate my entire preparation as to what was going on like why have i scored higher in a gt which is actually tougher than the inisit neat gt and then uh, i actually ended up giving a national mock on a different platform so around i think the second week of october i uh, got around uh, ar 463 uh, so upon looking uh, my score was actually low it was somewhere around the 130s but my rank was low so i was wondering okay maybe we should try attempt to revise before the exam maybe we should sit and study the last 15 days i should spend with full dedication for this exam maybe my score might improve like it could be a good motivation boost if i somehow manage to score in an already a rank of 1000 so that was my approach during towards the exam and uh, after i wrote the exam so i initially had a very good feeling but that would have been endorphins also because the exam got over but i initially had a good feeling i thought maybe oh i did the exam well because i seemed to recognize a lot of the questions and i felt like i marked correct answers also but i wasn't sure whether it was just a heady rush of endorphins or whether it i'd actually marked them right. so i was expecting around maybe uh, 400 500 or maybe around 600 that was my expectation as to the results but this is an entire complete curve ball which i did not anticipate at all even after i received the results it was so much of a pleasant shock that i had to call two three people to go and verify whether it, whether it was really my role number am i am i reading this correctly please call please please see and then i called my father over i called my brother over and i had to ask them whether it was actually my rank which was being seen so this was actually something which was quite unexpected and i would also like to add that uh, one thing which would help people within the set is to first stop hearing the exam So, stop thinking that this is something that i cannot do sure. it is something everybody can do. just an adequate strategy and adequate uh, effort is needed effort i think everybody is generalizing their 100% maximum so i don't think anybody is slacking off at this point of time it is just uh, each exam needs a different approach like i would not advise people the same kind of approach for both neat as well as mse both things require two different approaches so if we stick to one approach i think success is bound to find us true very true and uh... uh most important thing uh, i would uh, uh, ask you is like uh, like uh, you had a lot of options for uh, choosing your entrance program as far well as uh, it can be either an offline or a online program so uh, this is just for an advice for example uh, rank 18 uh, uh, from media plexus uh, dr uh, uh, anashra jacob she belongs to our uh, online live interactive platform and you belong to uh, a face to face program so uh, why did you choose a face to face program uh, is there any specific reasons for why you have chosen face to face program so uh, way back in 12 uh, when i actually attended a crash course for neat theory i realized that classroom environment was the perfect conducive atmosphere for me because i as a person require some amount of peer pressure to push me even though this may sound childish to some people that a professional is saying this thing but i personally feel that So being surrounded by like minded individuals uh, was something that was going to push me sir and uh, i usually thrive on human contact so i knew that if i had to sit at home for like 6 months or no and just looking at my parents and everybody else i, I would i would get mind boggled so 
I decided the live platform was the best thing for me. And I also found uh, the classroom set up very uh, engaging. Sir. Because if I was going to sit at home, there was a chance that I was going to be looking at my mobile. Nobody would be there to check up on. But here, at least I would have uh, some amount of innate discipline. Because I cannot be doing that sitting in class. And uh, even while in class, I will. Uh, I, I don't think I should be putting on the act of uh, an ideal student all the time. Even there were times when I used to feel sleepy, when I used to do so. And I have to thank my uh, excellent companions in class for this because they used to be sitting up. They used to make notes. Or when either one of us would doze off, the other would make notes, then wake the other person up and then teach them what we actually missed in class. And uh, all of them are very motivated individuals. And I feel surrounding yourself with motivated individuals is something which is highly essential. Because if, you're, if we are going to be surrounded by people who are going to be satisfied with mediocrity, we will never reach for the skies. And if we reach for the skies, we'll manage to reach at least, say, the top of buildings. If we set our targets slow, I don't think we'll ever reach it. So I was fortunate enough to be surrounded uh, and to be sitting amongst uh, like-minded individuals. And it was also nice interacting with some of the brightest doctors that were possible. So it was a good uh, learning experience. I personally wanted uh, live one-on-one -on -one contact with them. That is why I chose the face-to-face -face class. So uh, you're right. Uh, like face-to-face, -face, right now the luxury is like after post-COVID, uh, it's like uh, people have this option of sitting uh, at their own desk, uh, reading in online live event or a recorded video or a... Uh, kind of face to face program so it's purely a, a kind of the decision to take space. convenience and how they take the decision but yes. coming to a classroom it's mostly a discipline you know, you know in ADR Texas uh, <laughs> once you enter the auditorium you are like almost it's a closed auditorium once yes. you open uh, faculty will come to know about <laughs> your opening a door it's like a kind of a disciplined yes, environment sir. where uh, you are also under a pressure with uh, almost 500 mm -hmm. 600 doctors inside a classroom and you know the yeah. When we look at them being so motivated, it, it, we uh, we are forced to introspect as to why, why are we not being motivated. We are also going to take the same exam that they are going to take. We should be more serious. These are the people that we are going to compete against. Like that sense of discipline is instilled. With that being said, I, I would advise people to choose the platform that works best for us. If they are loners, if they like to work alone, it is better to sit at home. Like, I don't think anybody should be forcing themselves to fit a certain mold. Just because the other person is doing it. I just chose this because I feel um, I was most comfortable with this. So as we get group discussions are concerned, you had mentioned that uh, you would discuss with your friends. Uh, did you use any other platform to discuss or you were using uh, your uh, own uh, WhatsApp groups? How do you discuss? Uh... WhatsApp groups. Sir. We had a WhatsApp group on which we would post doubts. And even otherwise, while sitting in class, I was very fortunate enough to be surrounded by people who used to constantly ask doubts. Those things, okay. even I, I used to wonder. Like, how are they thinking like this? Like, I am I'm fried. My brain is fried. It's been eight hours since I came here. I'd like to go home. I'm hungry. But even, even during those times, they used to constantly um, talk about the subject or they would go ask doubts and then come back. And even during lunch, we would discuss, uh, talk about the subject here and there. And that all seemed to like instilled a, uh, while uh, instilling a healthy sense of confidence, it also served as a distraction. Sir, because some amount of human contact is needed, I feel, by True. going through Very this true. arduous journey. It just it is it's just very mentally it's mentally and even physically exhausting because uh, we are we are not like doing much physical activity also so we just feel lethargic and lazy all the time so it was like a nice excursion to get myself from my house to the class and then back home and uh, I would also like to dispel uh, the popular notion that we are not we are completely not supposed to talk with friends at all so anything preparation I still remember that you uh, came to class one day sir and told uh, just forget about Jayla this is this is something that the you know, subject is what is going to matter but the funny part was that after you told that I did go and see Jailer like a week uh, later. So I just feel like it's, it is about striking it's... a balance. I uh, what, 10 days before the exam was my birthday, I, I went and had dinner with my friends on, on my birthday also. So I just feel we just have to make a balance. I feel I was fortunate enough to have had a very good support system even at my house, even with my friends. So healthy balance. Was so uh, uh, the best thing is like... Uh... To get the maximum concentration, you need uh, distractions also. It's like yes, completely you cannot uh, move away from distractions. It will create a withdrawal kind of uh, kind of effect. So always distractions are needed to get back to the concentration mode. And exactly, you need to space it out. Otherwise, the stress levels during this kind of uh, preparation, it's going to increase. But what people tend to do, what do is that they mostly go with distractions rather than... They slack off, sir. I think... Uh... That is what needs to be there. So either we need to be innately disciplined to realize that, okay, this is Striking it. the right balance, mm -hmm. that's what uh, we say. But still, people uh, uh, 
if you are able to strike that right balance with your own kind of uh, scheduling and everything that will put you on the right track for success and uh, you have done everything and uh, already you are a topper so nothing to uh, discuss on this but most importantly what are the three things what you like about adr plexus uh, in this whole journey what are the three things if you have to mention or what are the things you would mention uh, uh, about adr plexus so uh, first of all uh, one thing i would like to add is the faculty were excellent uh, I did not have any uh, complaints. Uh, certain uh, faculties even ended up changing my mind about certain specialties. Like I, I initially used to be uh, very close-minded about uh, those topics. Uh, for example, uh, Khalilsa came to take radiology. Before that, I, I never realized that radiology was such a holistic specialty. Because even though he, he was taking radiology, he was talking about everything, starting from anatomy, till like pediatrics. He knew about everything. So I think he, he changed my worldview about radiology. Even for pediatrics, Dr. Sandeep was exceptionally good. Uh, a, lo a lot of the faculties were like that. Like, they, they were very good and they made sure that their notes were really crisp and excellent so that they could actually sit and revise. Uh, they were very high yield also. And uh, secondly, uh, the approachability is something which I would like to add. So, like I talked to multiple representatives of multiple coaching institutes before I chose ADR. Only ADR gave me the comfort and uh, comfort that I needed, sir. Like uh, other institutes talked to me as if. Uh, they were doing me a favor by admitting me. Admitting me. They, they, I don't think I, I, I felt even treated well by them. Only day I felt uh, the comfort and the approach. And even on uh, one day I was sick, I, I just had to text uh, Shankarana saying, Anna, I'm like sick today. Could you please share the online class? And within half an hour, he sent it to me. I felt like even if I had like any problems, I could feel uh, communicated. And uh, thirdly, uh, I would like to say ease of access. Sir. Like I, uh, from my house to the class, uh, where it is located, and also comfort, sir. Uh, in other classes, one thing, one other thing I noticed was how uh, constricted it used to be. We were absolutely comfortable in Tabo and all. no complaints at all. <laughs> it was an extre extremely conducive environment for uh, uh, listening to class. And uh, there is also the sense of uh, being rooted less like with other uh, institutes. Uh, I know they're more uh, national, but since uh, you guys are more local, I feel the, the connect is a little bit uh, extra. So... Uh, one of the things is like while you sit in an environment for 10 to 12 hours, uh, that's a one uh, important thing going we look into is like at least a kind of a stretching is needed uh, to get back into the concentration mode. So that is where uh, we choose the uh, environment so that uh, at least the majority of the subjects is being held on those auditoriums so that uh, you feel that uh, you are focusing more on the topic rather than on the discomforts you feel on sitting on a chair for more than 10 hours. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Roshin. That was a thank fantastic uh, interview. A lot of insights from you. I hope uh, people who are looking into this interview, they are going to take a lot of insights. Yes. They have carefully uh, seen all your points. Uh, to sum up, there are some seven to eight highly points which should have been implemented by them to become a top uh, Probably your juniors uh, who are going to look at this interview, they'll follow your footsteps to become and to walk into the corridors of the prestigious institutions in India. So, great. So, uh, uh, I would like to thank you also once again, sir, for, for all the words of encouragement uh, over the past few months. I remember attending your orientation class on the 9th of June, and I cannot believe that I'm here at this uh, juncture yeah. <laughs> to be able to yeah. talk with you one on one. Okay. Or even so, uh, Dr. Vimal, sir, he used to post uh, messages at like 4 o'clock in the morning every day on the group. I used to wonder how is sir getting up at this point of time every single day. And those words are also inspiring. Like I used to think if sir is able to get up at this point of time every day, I am the person who is going to give an exam in four, four months. Even I should be putting in, channelizing more efforts. So all that was all, all, always there. It was like a mental boost to all this. So this uh, first time we have implemented that uh, kind of uh, six to seven faculties were discussing questions continuously in the WhatsApp yes, group. That was extremely so, useful, sir. So discussing about the short video revisions were uh, put up in the group by uh, faculties who yes. were uh, discussing. Vimal, sir, as usual, uh, 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 one of the persons who will be working on the times uh, lines, actually. So glad. So glad yes. it worked for you. Glad, thank you, sir. Uh, I would uh, once glad. again like to thank Adia from the bottom of my heart, sir. Thank you. Thank They've you. Channelized. I think I would have prepared, but the right channel channelization of my uh, energies actually came from this platform. Thank you, Roshni, for your Thank wonderful you, words. Wishing you to reach uh, great rights in the Thank field you, you have chosen. Wishing you uh, all the very best uh, for the counseling. Thank Wishing you. you to get your seat of choice in your uh, 
most preferred college thank you sir so all the very best and thank it's you, a sir. wonderful opportunity for me to interact with a fellow of kmc and after a very very long period i feel and, extremely uh, overjoyed so i think uh, after a very long period of time uh, we are getting a rank from kmc and that to 9s it and the two from you it's a great honor for us thank, thank you, you thank you very much for the wonderful interview